Welcome! This is a three-day plot of the GOES X-ray flux. In the last few days we've had just a few intermittent flares. Does this mean that the sun is getting quieter? And the recent outbreak of solar activity is coming to an end? This is a plot of the total number of flares that we've had since the beginning of 2011. As you can see from January 2011 to September of 2013 we averaged about four flares per day and the monthly average sunspot number was less than 100 most of the time. But since October of 2013 we've been averaging something like nine flares per day and the sunspot number has been above 100. However in the last two weeks we've been less than three flares a day and the sunspot number has been declining rapidly. Today the sunspot number was just 96 and we're going to lose two fairly major regions over the west limb in the next day or two. So the number should drop yet further. Is this just a temporary lull or are we moving into a more quiet phase of solar activity? Here's a picture that is a combination of the SDO and stereo images showing the active regions all the way around the sun. Now to understand this map better you should understand that between minus 90 and plus 90 is the side of the sun that is facing the earth. On the left between minus 90 and minus 180 are regions that are over the east limb and are due to return in the next week or so. And the regions from 90 to plus 180 are regions that have recently rotated over the west limb and are not due back for a couple of weeks. You can see that we have just two established regions due to return in the next five or six days. New regions are indicated by a circle and there's only one of those developing in the northern hemisphere and that's at least 10 days away from becoming visible to us. Many of the established regions on the far side of the Sun have returned several times before, so are likely to come back as large, old regions that are, don't have a great deal of activity. So the prospects for increased activity do not look good for the short term. Solar activity comes in bursts. How do we know this? This is the result of some research that I've been doing with a colleague, Dr. Julia Saber, on the magnetic activity of the Sun. This plot is of the southern hemisphere at the beginning of solar cycle 24. As you can see there's a series of regular bursts starting in about December of 2009. The time axis along the bottom is measured in Carrington rotation number. Each rotation of the Sun takes 27.27 days. So each one of those markers is approximately four weeks. This regular pattern enables us to predict when the next burst was going to be and in some cases how large it will be. So the million dollar question is, when will the next burst be? At the beginning of solar cycle 24, the timing between bursts was about 8 Carrington rotations, or about 7 months. But it's been getting longer as the cycle's gone on, and that's usual. So my prediction is that the next major burst will be in August of 2014, plus or minus a couple of Carrington rotations. Primarily it will be in the southern hemisphere, and I think, believe it will be somewhat smaller than the last one. Others disagree. This is a forecast from the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. First I should probably explain what this graph is. In yellow is the daily sunspot number, in blue is the monthly average sunspot number, and in red is what is called the smooth sunspot number which is a 13 month running average. The dotted and dashed curves up to the right are their predictions of what will happen in the future. The dotted curve is their standard model and agrees rather well with what Dr. Saber and I have come up with for our estimate. However, the dash curve now puts solar maximum in late 2014 or early 2015. The last few cycles have been relatively short, averaging about 10 and a half years. Cycle 23 was the exception which lasted 12.4 years and I believe that cycle 24 could be yet longer again, maybe even surpassing the previous record which was 14 years. Even if we have passed solar maximum, remember the decay phase can still be very active. Take cycle 23 for example. In October of 2003, three years after solar maximum, we had two major X flares. In September of 2005, over five years after maximum, we had another X17 flare. This means that we could still be getting major flares as late as 2019 or 2020. For those advocating a new Maunder minimum being upon us, this must be a very disappointing cycle. There's no sign of any Maunder minimum coming. The purple triangle here is where I estimate solar cycle 24 will end up. And you can see it's about in the middle of the pack, it's a sort of an average cycle. 
Now, if you mark all the cycles that uh, were at this level or below, you can see that most of them were followed by a cycle that was larger. Those are the ones marked in green. Only three of them marked in blue were followed by a yet lower cycle. Similarly, if you looked at the higher solar cycles, you would find that they were generally followed by a lower one. This phenomenon is called regression towards the mean. Understanding the solar cycle is one of the most difficult problems in physics. Even the most sophisticated models are little more than educated guesses. Nobody can predict it reliably as yet. We're just going to have to wait and see who is correct. The highest probability is that none of us are. So until next time, stay tuned.